Hello, this is a Yamaha G3E made in 1980, 185 centimetres long and it's just come into stock so I want to assess it to see if there's any extra work we might need to do to perfect the piano. The case is in good condition and fortunately we have a, a Foric, a new Foric 179 alongside it here which we can compare it with. The Foric is a brand new piano and we've used it couple of times for concert hire but I don't think there's any marks on it at all perhaps very very slight ones and the Yamaha's got no damage on it really just light scratching the Yamaha's got good legroom for tall people and because the pedals are extremely low too they're about three centimeters from the floor which is ideal it means you um, legs fit under much better the pedals on the fore are five and a half centimeters which is still quite low actually, Five, seven centimetres is quite normal for a new piano um, and the legroom is about one centimetre more so uh, that's encouraging. Now the inside of the Yamaha is in extremely good condition, I've tested the tuning pins to make sure they're tight and we pitch rate it to 441 so uh, all the tuning pins are tight and the piano is in good condition generally and ready for another 30 or 40 years. Now Foric do a chrome fitting as this one or brass fittings uh, and uh, this uh, chrome fitting one is very popular. The action of the piano is in good condition. Uh, the first thing we want to do here is just to check the hammers and see if they are too tight. If they drop down nicely like that all together then none of these hinges are too tight and the other problem can sometimes be the hinges are too loose. So we check both of those and they're fine. Uh, you might see here I've raised up two hammers in the centre. This is C and C sharp a note 40 and 41 and, uh, and that's because the hammer blow is slightly too great and that's the first adjustment that will make uh, a difference to the piano if you haven't got very long and you're regulating a piano then uh, once you check the hammers as if they're too tight they might be lubricating we use a protec here we've talked about that in other videos but i just thought it might be helpful to go through everything that i'm doing here so the, those two hammers are higher that you might not be able to see as you can see actually so is insert something into there and just turn it to the right and that will raise the hammers up so obviously you need to do the rest I'm just doing a couple of these and then we'll do the rest later on and also I'm not doing a very fine regulation now it's just to sort of see what he's doing and the second thing would be the the, the less off here uh, the less off is how far the hammer gets to the string before it before it comes back and the, you might be able to see the left hand one which hasn't been done comes back a little bit earlier than the right hand one and of course it, it goes the right hand one's a bit higher to start with so not more difficult to see but you might see there so the, the right hand one's coming off later so that just it makes it a little bit uh, more f finesse when you're playing more subtle playing is is uh, you're able to play quieter basically if it's getting closer to the string and having adjusted the let off you adjust the drop that's how far it stays away from the string when all the rest of the movement uh, has finished. So if we look at these two here, that's C and B, and we see that, that C is staying slightly closer. You have to be careful not to overdo this because otherwise it won't work properly. And then we check the springs, whether once it's checked it's going to come spring up nicely like that. And this one springs up nicely up to the point where it's uh, holding itself as near to the string as, as is comfortable to do. So the springs are fine on the piano. The springs are under the lever here, a bit complicated to adjust, they're similar to Steinway springs. Um, Beckstein have a screw here which is much more easy to adjust. Something else we'll be doing is lubricating uh, the balance rail here, the pin needs cleaning and, lub and lubrication there, just easing slightly. Um, it's got slightly tight, if you lift the keys up you see they're not going down, some of them do go down. I think I tried one or two of the sharps, that, that one goes down nicely. They should all go down like that. A lot of them are staying up. And by the way, I um, mentioned this before, this rail here is to stop the keys coming out when the piano is being moved, and otherwise doesn't have a function, and Blutners don't have one very often. Uh, so I like to leave it slightly higher up so you can easily check the keys. So if you're a technician, just a small thing, and not important really, but uh, leaving this rail a bit higher up leaves a more of a gap. It doesn't need to be close to the keys, and it's useful because then you can just see whether the keys need lubricating or not. Now the hammers are in good condition, they do need light refacing and voicing, so that's something we're going to do as well. So there's refinement work that we need to do on this piano just to make it play like a new piano as much as we can. Uh, I mentioned the regulation, uh, so first of all check the key dip, I didn't 
mention that the key dip to me is slightly less than I'd like it to be 10.2 millimeters so it could go up by 0.5 of a millimeter but we did decrease the hammer blow so you can do either um, or both so we decreased the hammer blow from about 49 to 46 about, about three millimeters uh, and that means you don't need so much to in increase the key dip so one or the other um, key dips really important so I tend to like a key dip 10.5 to 11 so we'll see we'll look into that see what needs to be doing the team will get onto this as well and we'll work together on it so this is a regulation order if you've got a piano and uh, you haven't got a lot of time then the first thing to do is reduce the hammer blow definitely uh, and then let off those two will make the most difference the drop and uh, this is the order of do, doing things regulation I didn't mention uh, I haven't got here back check which I should have put down sorry about that so the last thing of all is back check after springs to see whether it's checking the right distance from the strings five eighths is normal but uh, it's very slightly and you don't want to wear out the back check so you, know, you want, want to regulate it sensibly sorry I didn't mention that it's mentioned in other videos and lubricate uh, I mentioned that and reweighing the keys well the, the weight of the keys is a little bit varied so we've got 53 which is correct roughly in the base 48 38 it suddenly goes down to so definitely need to reweight the keys and uh, to even them out so it's you can play just like a new piano then and you could study on it just like studying on a new piano so let's compare the tone of it with other pianos This is a restored 1898 Blues from the Grand Piano. So that's a Yamaha C3, 185 centimetres long, made in 1980. We've just come into stock and just some work to perfect the, the piano generally. It's been played a reasonable amount, so it needs refining in the regulation mainly and, and a little bit of refacing and voicing the hammers. And then it will be good to go for another 30 years or so. Cosmetically, it's in very good condition, just a few typical scratches that you get here, scratch marks as the music's been put on it. So the tone of the piano throughout is very pleasing indeed. I've enjoyed assessing it, enjoyed playing it. Just refinements to the action mainly, so you can play more sensitively and also just voicing and toning the hammers. And it's good to go for another 30 years or so, so I uh, can really recommend it. If you're interested in the piano, please do write to info at robertspianos.com. Thank you very much for listening. And by the way, I just wanted to mention about pricing of pianos. When a piano first comes in, we put it at the price we think it sh we should sell it for, and then it gradually comes down until it's sold. So as it's just come in, you might guess that it's at a a reasonable price we try to put it at what we think the piano is worth and then it will come down those to bargain prices after that so if you're interested in it uh, please keep looking at the website look at the piano and if you're interested in it now and you're thinking well um, I don't want to wait then do make us an offer we're, we do want to sell pianos and obviously we try and sell a certain number of grand pianos per month and normally manage to achieve that so thank you very much for listening and uh, really recommend that if you can't come in, then 
please do write to us and if you want to try the piano out you might like to rent it for a period that's perfectly possible well it tends to be dearer so obviously the best thing to do is to, to buy the piano outright <laughs>